Welcome to The Complete Musician, creativity at its core, exploring innovative musical ideas, thoughts, and techniques for the modern musician in today's society, with your hosts, James Nagus and Drew Phillips. Hey everybody, it's Drew, and welcome to another episode of The Complete Musician Podcast. And I'm James, and we are back after a busy summer, and if you want to hear all about that, check out the previous episode, where we did a little summer recap, but we're back into it. Semesters back have in started uh, for both of us. Oh yeah, and if you haven't been with us for a while, or, you know, ever, then we are two, you know, ordinary, normal tuba players who decided, mm-hmm. just kidding, we don't play tuba, but we uh, decided to create this podcast on creativity, and... All the things to do with being a complete musician, which we think means being more than just a player. We need to be able to do lots of stuff really good at the musical thing and be good and stuff. stuff. And And stuff. Musical things and stuff. Because music have lots of stuff. Right. And you always add stuff to make stuff sound better. Stuff. Yep. Stuff. Stuff. So some of the stuff that we've been doing recently are little mini segments or i don't know mini but little technique segments where we talk about a different element of horn playing specifically and some of these can relate to other brass or even other instruments but since we're horn players we figured it made sense that we actually talk about our instrument once in a while um which is i don't know kind of selfish maybe uh I'm, yeah pretty i mean i guess part of being a complete musician is being a horn player uh right? being part being a musician means being selfish right yes Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just like well, being we're... a cook means being shellfish. <laughs> okay. So, um, um, apart from that bad pun, yes, uh, we are going to be selfish again. Yeah, we're going to be selfish, and we're going to continue our little mini series on horn technique. And today is all about burm, burm, rhythm. Burm. Oh, sorry, my fanfare interrupted. Uh, you. Oh well. Let's okay, try it again. Hold on. Do your do your. <clears throat> burm, 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 burm. That's a terrible tone. But yes, uh, it is about rhythm. Yay, rhythm. Woo. Woo. Uh, so rhythm is something, if you've listened to our other two miniseries, the first one was on trills, which mm-hmm. like woodwind players and like we need to know how to trill, but like that's not super applicable to like, you know, tuba or whatever. And then... Oh, but they like, them, they like them too. I've heard many a tuba trill. You've heard a tuba I mean, trill? I, well, I, no, I've, I've felt it. Tuba trill? Tuba trill sounds like a really big flower. Look, look <laughs> or a I Pokemon. Today. I planted my garden full of tuba trills. Aww. I think it sounds like a Pokemon. Like, I caught a tuba trill. A tuba, like a Pokemon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I caught it. <laughs> look, I want a tuba trill in a raid. Woo! What does it evolve into, though? Uh, a tuba trill? Like, I don't know. A uh, tuba tremolo? A Ooh. trimatuba. Maybe. A, a tuba, tuba blast. A tu- oh, a chimbasso. A Chubasa. That's, <laughs> That's pretty good. It sounds sound British and everything. Anyway, um, you know, Chuba, whatever. Uh, so, yeah, the first one was on trills. The second one was on articulation, which we all need to know how to articulate, yes. Uh, but this I, next but one. Word, I went words together and some sentence. I, it's when you really are, enunciate the consonants oh. and everything. Um, which, okay. if you listen to our last two podcasts, uh, I did not have this little speech filter, so every, like, P sounded like I was punching you. So, sorry about that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, that wasn't very articulate. But this next one is, or today's, is about rhythm, and that's because we all need rhythm. And there's been a lot of exercises that I've been doing with my students that have helped to reinforce rhythm and have made some really creative ways for practicing. So I thought that I would share that, and I know... Uh, James, you have some cool ones that you've been doing lately, too. Well, like you said, I mean, rhythm is something that we can all work on. And I know, you know, a lot of the students that I've taught over the years, they work on it, too. It's just one of those, like, universal musical fundamental things that we strive to get ingrained. Um, But like any other musical skill, like ear training and like performance it's something that you have to keep working on it's not just a finite skill that you once you learn it like you're good you got it now you have to keep working on it so yeah and, and it's also like not super fun to work on or it can not be super fun to work on it can yeah it can be certainly clinical if we just put on dr beat and just like okay you must keep this on quarter note equals 80 
practice your scales and go. Or if you just, you know, play I Got Rhythm over and over and hope to absorb, that doesn't really work. So, right. we so have let's to... talk about, can we start talking about metronome first? Um, um, I mean, how to use it or? Uh, yeah, uh, sure. Uh, you need to throw it in the garbage and never use it. Perfect. Oh. Oh, sorry. Smash it with a hammer. That's quicker. I'll smash it with a hammer. It's brilliant, 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 I tell you. Not a fan of the old metronome? Oh, I use the metronome. Uh, what do you <laughs> use it for? <laughs> um, let's see. Because I certainly <clears throat> use it, but I want to hear your idea first. I'm voluntold um, you. I was trying to think of something silly to say, but I honestly can't think of anything because, let's be real, metronome is a serious business. That's right. So, um, I mean, beyond, you know, just putting it on and playing along, if there's an etude that has a metronome marking and you just need to know what it is, that's the base level thing. But um, a more fun way, of course, like I said, the goal is to get kind of this intrinsic beat, this pulse that just we feel. We don't need to tap out or count or have reminded to us. So... One way to do that is if you're practicing something and you want to be precise, start off with a metronome with subdivision. So you're in 4-4, four, four, just have it pop out every eighth note, right? Play the passage. Then change it so it's now only um, beeping every uh, pulse, every quarter pulse. And then every two, and then every measure, and then every two measures, every four measures. And so you get this increasingly void in between it clicks and if you aren't exactly precise you'll know it but it's kind of a, a challenge it's a kind of a way to make it into a game that isn't oh, yeah. quite so annoying um, yeah that's a really good a challenge to a challenge. Uh, to do that you said it uh yeah that's a really good challenge to do um and certainly tough like yeah but fun. i mean to have your metronome, it's not stressful yeah to <laughs> to have it like gradually go away and see if your internal subdivision is actually as good as you think it is. That's tough. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So one of the, um, well, are, are you done? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, Let me think okay. about that. So we'll more. keep going. No, yeah. I can, talk about, um, I can talk about metronomes. I mean, there are these like nasty, the little squirrely people? little creatures that uh, throw you off every time you're trying to play in good tempo. You know, metronomes. They're dressed, they're dressed really well. They metronomes. They are. They live under the ground and they're dressed impeccably well. A anyway, um, they're very similar to gremlins, except you can get them wet and it's okay. Anyway, uh, gremlins have way worse teeth though. They're like super sharp, aren't they? Uh, gremlins. Honestly, yeah. I'm not. I haven't seen the movie in forever, so I would not. I don't know. I don't know. All I think about that is little weird creatures and or like Furbies. I just think gremlins. Furby. Yeah. Did you have a Furby? Uh, no. I. Um... I had a Furby. What? It was super annoying. <laughs> did it just go off in the middle of the night? No, but it did just never wake up. It was always asleep. <laughs> oh, I think no. it was like, I think it you was had a narcoleptic. narcoleptic. Yeah. <laughs> it never woke up. Like I always turned it upside down and it screamed because it was scared. <laughs> what would you do that for? Because it wouldn't wake up. And then I turn it back over and it's like, ah, sleepy time. And then it does the annoying little, little like sleepy sound. That's actually kind of tragic. It was. I'm Furbies not gonna lie. Weird. Anyway, apart from Furbies and Metro gnomes, um, <laughs> one of the things that I do uh, with my kids and, and that I've done is I've actually incorporated some improvisation uh, using the metronome. And so I stole this totally from uh, Guru and uh, you know Euchre playing master Jeff Agrell. Uh Stolen from him. Another plug for him. Uh, so I, I learned one of the first things we did in his classical improv class at Iowa. Um, I'm sure you did this in your class too, but in my class, what we did is we all like stood up and then like swayed back and forth in like a big circle. And we counted off to eight um, in like groups of eight. And we picked two numbers to clap on and that, uh, and we counted out loud and we clapped on one of our numbers. We wouldn't tell anyone our numbers. And just to see like within the class, what kind of rhythms we created, which is pretty cool. And so then uh, after that, we gradually stop saying the beats and we just, you know, stomp because we're swaying back and forth uh, to see what beats we're, we're doing. 
and uh, or to keep the pulse. And so we gradually would eliminate talking about it. We gradually eliminate swaying and then just kind of stand and see if we could keep the pulse as a group. Um, and so I've done that with my students to help drive and to help internalize internal subdivision. And it has been amazing and revealing over how many of them can actually keep not only focus on numbers they're supposed to like clap or play on, but also how many of them rely on a metronome or, you know, when it's turned off, how many of them completely lose the concept of pulse. Hmm. Well, and I think your exercise brings up two good points as well, which is number one, we don't have to include pitch to work on rhythm as mm -hmm. obvious as that actually sounds, but honestly, right. you know, uh, and then second, the importance or the power of feeling rhythm and feeling pulse. Oh, absolutely. And I'm thinking back to the days of, you know, like my early music education where we established pulse and you get it feeling in your heels and on your lap yeah. and, um, and moving, like you said, just even like marching around the room or something. Um, because if you can feel it, that's a lot easier to then internalize in that that way. And those kind of games are perfect for not only like establishing pulse and internal subdivision with students like we have, like private students, general music classes is perfect. Like little kids when mm -hmm. they're in elementary school and the only goal of the day is to like establish some kind of pulse or have them clap together. Like if you, you know, in, in kindergarten, if you have them clap together in a consistent pulse, like, yay, you've actually done a thing. And right. that's totally a way to do it. But um, like you said, bringing up the good point of not using pitch so much. I mean, when we do, you know, improvisation, we already talked about at some point, we'll probably delve into it a lot later with different activities and other podcasts. But, um, you know, we're so pitch based. And so to work on this technical skill without that is such a it's just such a dream that we don't have to constantly be playing the horn and worrying about pitch and worrying about fingerings and all these things when, uh, you know, we're, we're still working on the part of the horn that everyone, like you said, needs to internalize and everyone needs to adequately be a good musician. The way I tell my students is that, you know, as Western classical musicians, like we're so pitch centered and we're so like based on, music reading and right note, wrong note and reading the rhythm rhythms and all that kind of stuff that we forget that our colleagues over in, you know, other continents have figured out that we don't need to make something interesting or vary it and make it engaging by changing pitch all the time. And that it's all about rhythm and the different kind of beats that go into it. Oh yeah. So, Some of the most interesting music is the music that's rhythmically complex. Right. And not pitch complex. Right. And so, um, but that's one way I found to work on rhythm with my kids and going a step further with that little exercise as a creative exercise. Um, what I did recently is I made a sheet of like little lines. I took uh, eight, just like we were counting in, you know, eight kind of thing. Um, I put eight lines on a sheet of paper eight times. So eight phrases of like eight beats kind of thing stacked on top mm -hmm. of each other. And I gave the sheet to my kids and I told them to circle uh, like 30 of them or 32 of them. And I would do the same thing and we would come back together and that would be like our sheet music. I'm doing air quotes if you're listening and uh, that's our like sheet music. And so we'd like read that and you would play or clap on the beats that you circled and it'd be totally different between the two of us. But mm -hmm. it makes this kind of like cool thing that's going on. And uh, eventually we put pitch to that, like one pitch to that. And then we could even go a little further. And if rhythm was, you know, getting better or we, we, we weren't relying so much on talking out loud, especially when we were playing, then we turn off the metronome as we're doing this. Because all this would be done with the metronome up to that point. And mm -hmm. it is amazingly revealing what things happen when you're being focused independently for a long amount of time. So mm -hmm. that was a really great exercise and really easy to do. Mm -hmm. So I that was a really creative way for me to work on rhythm with my kids. Yeah. Uh, anytime you can involve any kind of improvisation or, I mean, what this sounds like, it was kind of the building blocks of mm -hmm. music down to the core of just rhythm, then adding pitch, and then perhaps even changing the pitch, stuff like that. So one other activity that can be kind of fun, um, and this has to do with specific rhythms because 
there are certain patterns that I think you'd agree are more difficult per se. Like for instance, dotted eighth sixteenth versus triplet. Just Ooh, even yeah. internalizing and, that and getting that feel. Oh, making that distinction. Yeah, yeah that's right. Really hard. Yeah. So you can take something like the framework that's familiar, like a scale, for instance, right? And in the kind of same way that we'll do a rainbow scale or traversing the kind of up and down, but in a beautiful and unique and Wait, different way. Oh, hold on, oh, what kind of scale? Like a rainbow scale. I seriously thought you said Rambo, and I yes. was really imagining what a Rambo scale was, well, other than like punching everyone. And okay, I'm no, a Rambo scale is you. where you just pick up your instrument after sitting in cold for a long and just start. You just go. You just full just speed go. ahead, That's fortissimo. Right. That's oh, the Rambo like, style. I, oh, like how I play every concert? Oh, perfect. Then I Rambo all the time. Mm-hmm. Ready, set, play. Perfect. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah. Pardon me. Go on. So if, you, if you're if you doing a Rambo scale, and uh, you could just take that rhythm, like your dotted 8th, 16th, and then play three of those per note of the scale. Or you could go back and forth. You could do dotted 8th, 16th, then triplet, then dotted 8th, 16th. And, you know, you're just... Picking some way, some framework to help you practice that in perhaps a more musical way than just doing it repeated on, say, like a, a G in the staff, which is inherently boring and um, probably would make you want to just throw your horn in the trash can or totally. sell it on eBay or I don't or know. Or give it away. Yeah. Or use it as a lamp. Or use it to dig trenches. I, uh, you know, I dug a mailbox. Uh, hole the other day, and I probably could have used my horn. Yeah, you could have. I, it it would have been kind of hard. But, I mean, um, actually, I know quite a few horns. I've I've played quite a few horns that would probably be better served as uh, water fountains <laughs> than musical instruments. Water so, fountains. <laughs> well, at least it's poetic. Then, of? you know, Aww. it would be a nice little aesthetic thing coming out of the bell. Yeah, um, no, it would just be a slow trickle out of the uh, the slide or the uh, the water. <laughs> and it would be the world's worst fountain world's worst fountain, or oh, even worse re- have a backwash fountain coming out of the <clears throat> pipe <clears throat> sorry i just threw up <laughs> um oh wait well me. that reminds me of one of our early unofficial sponsors too the spit drip and slip S- water park is spit, that what it drip was and slip water park yeah that was yeah. a great one in somewhere california i'm pretty right. sure yeah, I think so. Yeah, you should go visit Spit, Drip, and Slip Water Park if you haven't. Uh, or check that, out the promotional they, uh, commercial. The, yeah, there's yeah. a uh, $15 off coupon included if you subscribe and then email us all of your thoughts and ideas for how to successfully boogie board uh, in the ocean. Yep. Yeah, um, there's a $15 coupon for you, so make sure you do that and get back with us. Um also, I forgot there's one other cool way uh, that I found – or I, th- I thought about rhythm that I do. Um, kind of goes along with, well, what you were saying. Maybe not really. Um, I have these rhythm cards that I do, or um, I have big ones that uh, that have, like, entire measures of rhythm that you were saying doing scales on. Mm-hmm. That's kind of cool, uh, working on rhythm, but, like, also working on scales and things. So, like, connecting things, like, you know, like music does. Um, but like I dots. also have these – you what? Connecting things like dots. Yeah, like dots. Hooray. Like the game Two Dots. I love that game. And then... The world's uh, fastest connect the these... dots. You what? So that's the world's fastest connect the dots game. There's only two. Ooh. Yeah, it's actually really hard. I don't know if you tried. But anyway, uh, shameless plug for Two Dots. They're not sponsors. Um, but I had these individual cards that have like eighth rests and eighth notes and things like that that you could just like line up and put them... Kind of like those, you know, those um, magnets that you put in your fridge that have like random words and people come by and make like really crazy Ooh. sentences. Yeah, mm-hmm. and if you do that with rhythm, that'd be really cool because there's no sense. I mean, not like a sense of pulse, but you could just make these crazy rhythms that have no like time signature, but add up to these crazy values. And just rearranging them makes it really tough to work on, or, or like a rhythm really kind of difficult to play. But it's good practice to try and keep pulse through all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. You know? yes. Especially when you get music that is, um, I don't know, written in a way that's not idiomatic. So you, Ooh, you have, like, yeah. strange syncopations or... Like crazy time signatures. Yeah, stuff. Yeah. So any if you can go outside the box before um, and, and practice that way, it's helpful. Yeah, definitely don't stay in the box, or you could be Schrodinger's dead cat or a live cat. Either one. 
Mm-hmm. Um, Make sure you play outside the button. Right. I think it's actually kind of imperative that we think about this kind of thing because rhythm is one of those things that's not, I mean, it's, it's not really technical. Like it's not a skill that you have to, that you can physically develop. It's something that's intellectually developed. And I think it's really hard for a lot of people to work on rhythm. I know I have a lot of students that come in and I'm like, you know, what's something that you want to work on? And uh, like first time students and they're like, my rhythm is bad. Well, how do you, you know, what is a way to work on it? And honestly, they have no idea. Well, all they say is, uh, the metronome. But then it's like, well, how do you actually use how do you that? Use it? Right. <laughs> right, right. And so I think it's really cool that we're coming up with these ideas. And I think that they're really useful and could be used by, you know, we're saying horn specific, but actually this doesn't have to be horn specific. Oh, no, all. this is totally widespread. Yeah. So I think that just rhythmically anyone can work on rhythm this way internal subdivision and keeping pulse and being independent and also combining some you know some other neat skills like pitch and and that kind of thing along with it too and it's it's really kind of cross disciplines Mm -hmm. um so i think it's really imperative but anyway um those are just ideas that uh we heavily suggest you take and use with your students if you're not using them or take them and do them yourselves there's nothing wrong with you doing you know what james's first idea was and playing a passage when gradually like taking away metronome pulses or like what i said of you deciding you know you're going to kind of improvise with yourself and um taking away the metronome as you clap and make up things on different beats or any of the other ideas we discussed there's nothing you know, and you know, there's nothing wrong with you doing that All right. yourself. So yep. these are just ways that you can do it. But if you, if you have anyway, bad I rhythm, think... you what? Sorry, I was talking over you a little bit. If you're you making bad a terrible rhythm, joke, it's like that song, right? It's like I've got bad rhythm. Rhythm. I've got music. Well, that's what it sounds like. So you're actually singing it perfectly. I've got my gal. I don't need anything I, less. G- yeah, perfect. Actually, you did that well. You deserve a Grammy. I've actually awarded you a Grammy. Uh, um, let me slap some auto-tune, and then I'll get back to you. Okay, perfect. Um, well, I think that about wraps up our uh, our section on rhythm, but um, I'm introducing a new segment um, right at the end of this. Yeah? Mm-hmm. It's our newest uh, segment. Uh, it sounds like a food thing, but it's not. Uh, we're going to introduce this new ending segment for our podcast called Food for Thought. Ooh. All right. So I want to like know your thoughts on this. Uh, so I need orchestra? to know. I need to know your initial thoughts on this. Mm-hmm. So recently, um, this is a very official uh, thing that I saw. Maybe you've seen it before, and it is the rank ordered instrument capacity for conveying sadness. Have you seen this chart? Uh, no, I have not. Okay. Okay, so I'm not going to give you all of them because there is a total of 44 instruments on this. So wait, and this that is ranked. Is, it encompasses, like, it is ranked like, by, like, what instruments convey sadness, like, played. From the sad. most sad to... The most it, sad then? to the least sad. So here's, uh, so here is your food for thought question. Where, out of the 44 rankings, where does horn land? Mmm... So would you classify horn as a sad sound or a happy sound? Well, I think it has the ability to uh, portray several innate qualities and characteristics. One of which... <laughs> okay, no, that doesn't help. No, no, no. Uh, so this is an opinion question. <laughs> is the horn sad? Absolutely it can be, yeah. But it's also fanfare, so it can be like exciting and heroic. So it has a duality to it that it, I think is it must be appreciated and must be, you know, respected because the horn is not only the You're mediator, boring everybody. The Quit boring everyone. The the of the strings. Basically, it's, you know, the um it's what the glue that holds the whole orchestra together. And in, in that Could you, you keep know, it down. So I'm trying to be boring. least of which is sadness and, Boring. and um, a sense of awesomeness. So that was way too deep, and that's definitely going to get like a timer, like, that took too long. 
Uh, two is fine. Or a get on with it. All right, smarty uh, pants. Well, what do you think? You already okay. looked at the chart, so you're cheating. I am cheating, but that's because I found it, and that is my prerogative cheat. And what? Okay, answer me this: Do you think that? Think more like commercial recording. There you go. Think about on on that line. And if you're thinking commercial recording, what instruments? Or like, would you, do you hear horn like before someone? Or what instruments do you hear before someone's gonna die? The end. Uh, organ and or clarinet. Okay, so let's see. Okay, because uh, of, mostly because of the like. Uh, okay, the, okay. The uh, first question. Commercial. First question. I'll ask you a few. What instrument? Where do you think horn lands? That's my first one. Out of the forty, and I'll tell you if you're right or not. Out of the forty-eight. Out of the forty-four. Forty-four, with one being the saddest. With one being the saddest, 44 being like, uh, I am not mourning. 37. You are ridiculously off. Mm-hmm. Corn gets number 12. Yeah, I, I, I disagree. I. Oh, wait, I wait, hold on, it. hold on. Are we talking about the sadness of the person playing it? Because if so, then I believe. <laughs> I think it's like conveying, it's conveying sadness. That's what it is. A capacity for conveying sadness. It totally has the capacity. Isn't there. Who was it that posted something oh. on like horn people that's like as sadly as possible? Who, oh, what solo right. was that from movie? Oh, that was, that was Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At like the solo, as sadly as possible. Look at that. Anyway, it's number twelve. Okay. Or Here's no, that question. was Star Trek. Sorry, it was. Uh, it was the Star yeah, Trek. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, it was Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, okay, my other question: What instrument do you think was ranked number one? I'll give you a hint. It was not two of the instruments that you mentioned earlier. The human voice. It, okay, that's not. On. Oh wait, that is on here. Ugh, okay, number two. All right, you got close. Number okay. two. Number the voice one? is number two. Number one is an instrument. It's an instrument. It's an instrument. Oh jeez, is it the English? Horn? Think of it like a solo instrument, like an instrument that pl- that is played Violin. solo. Oh, you're so close. That's number three. Viola? Do you want me to tell you? No, it's number four. Cello? You're so close cello yay I, okay. I mean that's what i think of like that's number one and i mean that totally reinforces that whenever i hear like a cello solo definitely someone especially in musical theater is about to die so that's <laughs> yeah definitely probably. totally true <laughs> totally true okay here's my other question uh what instrument landed last 44 what <laughs> oh, instrument boy. is the least sad uh is because the least list? capacity for conveying sadness you what is kazoo on the list? This encompasses all instrument families. Kazoo? No, there's no Okay, kazoo. gong. Sorry. I know. That was actually a pretty popular answer. So not but the there tam- are not it's the tam tam? Okay. Um not Timpani? You mean gong. And, n- no. Timpani has I'm hot or cold. No. Uh you're warmer with timpani. Think okay. less emotion. <laughs> Think less pitch. A, a symbol? Dude, you're Triangle. so close. That's 42. Yeah, that's 40. Um, keep going. Uh, I pr- a snare oh, drum? Yeah, you got it. Number 44 <laughs> is a snare drum. <laughs> Actually, I think that is a, that has the capacity for, like, total sadness because, in my opinion, whenever someone strikes a snare drum in, like, a uh, stage setting, someone's been shot. I, and that yeah. mean, that's, I right. mean, that's pretty sad. Or you're watching a film and all of a sudden there's a snare drum solo. Something's going down. Oh, right, so that's a firing squad right there. Anyway, yeah. Um, okay, now my last question: What instrument do you think should have been last? It, well, the kazoo, or uh, okay. Um, well, clearly the contrabassoon because it's a joke of an instrument. Am I right? Contrabassoon is number thirty-one. Ew. What? Number they, they clearly haven't heard that Petrushka uh, orchestral <laughs> audition video on YouTube, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, I'm I don't know. What do you sure think? That, uh, the least, the least sad banjo, all day long. Oh, but you can have some sad banjo. You can. Uh, you totally... can I mean, only if you, <laughs> only if you've seen Deliverance, and that's anyway. Have you seen Deliverance? Well, uh, who hasn't? Uh, I oh, think we okay. all tend to block it out of our memory, but it, that's yeah, it's not it's not great. Um, no, the the silliest but... instrument is probably the automaton, which is have you ever seen one of those? It's this no, little electronic that? thing that has like a face, and you squeeze its mouth, and it goes, and then you can change <clears throat> the pitch on it. 
It's no. The goofiest thing ever. That's okay. Well, I know what I'm looking up now. Uh, after we finish this, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I would say banjo or someone else I heard said uh, the recorder because everyone is sad when they have to hear it and play it. <laughs> oh, that would <laughs> like be the little one. recorder that you play in elementary school. Yeah. That's a pretty wretched sound and everything. Anyway, uh, okay, well, I just thought, oh, but interesting things. Um, somehow, for ca- conveying sadness, uh, despite the fact that Careless Whisper exists, Horn beat alto saxophone. Wow. I know. Can you believe that? String instruments, of course, like pulled rank on the first, you know, four slots. Well, bass is uh, number 16. Um, we also be wait. We hold on. Every... Bass beat like a whole Battlestar like Galactica. Some things. <laughs> you said bass beats Battlestar Galactica. You said it. Um, Bears uh, beats. Yeah, double bass beat trombone <laughs> and trumpet. Are you kidding? We beat horn beat every single saxophone. Well, can you believe that? Um, um, well, I but mean, the last it, saxophones aren't real. Um, instruments to be honest those are no they're actually fake and they're figments of all of our imaginations the last uh the last like nine slots are all filled up by poor percussion but i mean i'm having a really hard time trying to imagine a (laughs) a sad bass drum right a sad a sad cymbal i guess can you imagine a sad tambourine detuned or something like that while it was being played (laughs) Yeah, can you imagine a sad tambourine? How would you if it was being played by like tambourine? a frowning clown or something like that? <laughs> like a frowning clown? Yeah, <laughs> that's so sad. Anyway, um, okay, well that's the end of our food for thought segment. Wow. So ends another thrilling and compelling episode of the Complete Musician Podcast. And chilling and spilling, and all of the other gerunds that we can think of that rhyme with those words. Um, we thank you for listening and we hope you'll come back to visit us soon uh, in our next release Uh, we have lots of things on the horizon and we're very excited about our upcoming projects and things because there's lots of them in our uh, very little uh, free time now that we're kind of underway with the school year and uh, we uh, we want to let you know that you can contact us if you're watching this on YouTube then you can comment below Uh, we also have a website which is coremotohorn.com. Go visit it. We have reviews from like great people like Dumbledore. And mm-hmm. we uh, we also have an email, which is coremotohorn at gmail.com. So send us all of your thoughts and complaints and arguments. And if you, uh, if you think that we need to have more things like food for thought, or if you think that we need to eat more food, let us know because uh, we will oblige, especially if that is tacos. Mm-hmm. And if you have any coupons for said food, feel free to send those to cormotohorn at gmail.com as well. Right. So we will see you next time. And as Aristotle once said, teach a man to fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to play the bassoon and you should get out now. (laughs) 